Welcome, Mindsetters. I hope you guys are ready for the session. It's going to be intense. There's a lot of stuff we're going to be going through. And guys, 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 as I always say, make sure you're making notes. But today, Kathy, what are we going to be going through? We are finishing off endocrine system or chemical coordination. Um, and I know that we weren't supposed to. We're supposed to be doing um, evolution and... Bleh. Okay. But that's all in but interesting. <laughs> okay, so next one, next I one. sort of took liberties here and I said, no, hold on. We actually fell short last week mm. with the endocrine system or chemical coordination, and it is so important. important. So we just need to wrap um, it up. Huh? Yeah. Mm. So it, it, and you know what? It's, it's good marks. Jeez, guys, these are easy marks. They're easy, easy, easy marks. So we're going to go to it. All right. Awesome. Cool. So while Kathy makes her way there, Matrix, you know the deal. Hit me up on the page, www.facebook.com forward slash learn extra. Get chatting to me, get chatting to me, get chatting to me. If you're lost anywhere, need help, post on the page so I can get those questions to Kathy and then she can help you guys out. But for now, guys, I'm going to hand over the show. Kathy, take it away. Okay, people, just to recap, chemical coordination, all right? Remember, coordination means to make everything work together. Chemical coordination is, is, is the process of the endocrine system and the endocrine glands release hormones, which are chemical messengers made of protein. So they're sensitive to temperature and pH, okay? Those whole, except the sex hormones, um, they're only made of fats. But all your other hormones are made of fat and protein. All right, they're chemical messengers. And those chemical messengers go along a very specific path, which is the blood. Right, and they take into a target organ, a very specific target organ. You remember that I said I was sending my daughter the hormone to my neighbor, the target organ, to bake a chocolate cake. I didn't bake the chocolate cake as the endocrine gland, my daughter didn't bake the chocolate cake as the hormone. It is the target organ that performs the function, but only because it was told to do so or requested to do so by the message. So Endocrine glands secrete hormones, okay, which are chemical messengers, and the chemical messengers travel directly into the blood because endocrine glands don't have a duct like your exocrine glands do. So endocrine glands secrete hormones directly into the blood, and the blood takes those, those uh, uh, um, hormones to a very specific target organ, and it causes the target organ to perform a function. We went through homeostasis, which was a process to maintain a balance within the internal environment of the body. And we spoke there about what homeostasis would affect. It would affect the tissue fluid and the, and the various uh, things that are in, the t in and around the tissue fluid, which bathes the cells. So you would... Can't, you would um, maintain a balance in the temperature, you would maintain a balance um, with regard to blood sugar, so how much glucose, how little glucose, um, you would maintain a balance with, with water and, and all the dissolved mineral salts, etc. So those are some of the things that we would have to make sure we have a balance. So it doesn't mean that uh, everything is the same all day. Your temperature goes up, it comes down. It goes up, it comes down. Our sugar levels go up and down and up and down all day. It's how we control it, like, for example, with chemical messengers called hormones. Now we have an organ, and that's when I told you that if, that, um, you love somebody, if you really love somebody, you love them with your entire hypothalamus because the hypothalamus is part of the nervous system the central nervous system to be specific, and the hypothalamus controls the pituitary gland. And the pituitary gland, we term our master gland. It is the master gland for all chemical coordination. So the hypothalamus controls the pituitary. That means the hypothalamus controls everything that keeps us alive. Right, now, with the pituitary gland, we looked at where it was placed, and we said that we look at the two halves. We have the anterior lobe, which is the lobe that points forward, and the posterior lobe, which points backwards. And each lobe secretes different hormones. Now, you need to know this. And what I suggested you did was take an, two A4 sheets or two sheets of an exam pad and do a table. Put this whole lot 
onto a table and even leave a little space to do a little diagram so that you know exactly where the location is. If you've done that, I promise you now you've got 100% for chemical coordination. All right, so just going through this, um, the anterior lobe, which is the front side, the anterior lobe releases growth hormone. Why do we need growth hormone? We need it to grow, repair, and replace cells. Okay, the problem comes in when guys, for example, or people take anabolic steroids or performance enhancers um, and, well, in the old days, your anabolic steroids were basically progesterone from horses, female horses. I mean, can you imagine? And guys would inject themselves with us. So, um, it's, it's the, the, your steroids are there to build your anabolic. Anabolic to build, catabolic to break down. So anabolic steroids would build the body. So it's a form of growth hormone or GH. Now, if you are getting this growth hormone, the pituitary says, well, hello, uh, why do I have to do this? Why do I have to make this stuff and send it around and secrete it? Why? Someone else is doing it for me. So you know what? I'm going to sit back and I'm going to chill and let the other one do it. Except that the anabolic steroids that the people take isn't the complete package of growth hormones. So that is why people that are anabolic steroids, they have muscles that look like this, but they have acne and they have receding hairlines and the females have ovaries that are shriveled up and the males have testicles that are like non-existent peanuts, all right? And they... they all kinds of yucky things like that that happen when people go overboard. They also have anger management issues. They really have anger issues. Um, very aggressive, especially if guys are on, on, on anabolic, and let girls on anabolic steroids. So what you're doing is instead of giving the body the whole growth hormone, you're giving them parts of it just to develop muscles, and the rest of the body then suffers. But that's how hormones work. If you give it a hormone in your body and you take it externally, um, the body just says, well, cool, I don't have to bother doing this anymore. And that's why there's a problem with people that take cortisone, because their body stops producing natural cortisone. And that's why doctors don't like doing it. So never, ever fiddle around with hormones. All right, so they for growth repair and replacement. If we have over-secretion in a child, clearly there's too much growth. They end up with giantism. Too little growth. Uh, I mean, in adults, too much growth, you end up with acromegaly. We can't grow bigger, but you end up with the skin and the bones growing. Okay, under secretion, um, in children, you end up with a pituitary dwarf. And this is where we ended last week. A pituitary dwarf is not the same as um, dwarfism. Because dwarfism is a syndrome. But if you look at, at uh, all the little dwarfs in the world, they all have very similar characteristics. They'll have a, a normal sized torso um, and, and, and body, but little short arms and little short legs and uh, basic facial features and shapes are the same. It is a syndrome. It is not a lack of growth hormone, which is where you have what the, why we, deter, we call it a pituitary dwarf. Um, that's just somebody who's very small. So to be like a little per, a person who's a miniature, uh, like a, a mini me, um, what, what's that movie with mini-me? and? It's Austin Powers. Austin Powers. And you have little mini-me. All right? Now, mini-me is just a little version of big-me. Um, they're the people who go and buy shoes in, in the children's section because they've got a size 2 shoe. At least they can find a size 2, unlike, you know... There's some women who can't You can, can never find, find fives or sixes in anywhere because they seem to think that fives or sixes, guess what? Most people, of, most women are five or a six. Six or four. One would actually think they'd say, you know what, let's stock more of those, but they don't. But anyway, <laughs> so the, the little people, they ex they all in proportion, they are exactly like everyone else. They just like reduced in size. So they'll be four foot tall or three foot tall. That's a pituitary dwarf. And then in adults, you have premature senility because your cells aren't, aren't, aren't replacing themselves. So you end up going senile. So when you say, like us, we say, oh, senile old person, uh, we actually have no idea. Se senility, the people actually don't remember things and their bodies get weak and they can't move like they used to because things just don't, don't work. All right. So that's actually a problem. Then um, we look at this. Now, this is important. 
very, very important. Follicle, uh, where, where is my goodie? Follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. People in males, it stimulates the making of sperm. Sperm and genesis. Genesis means to create in the beginning. So spermatogenesis, making sperm. And then here we have, in females, it, it, it stimulates the development of the follicle, which is going to release the little egg cell in ovulation. Luteinizing hormone, and this you're going to know, have to know in detail when you get to the section on reproduction. So learn it now, and then, you, then it's done. Okay, in males, um, it stimulates the synthesis of testosterone. Okay, and you know that testosterone is what gives guys their secondary sexual characteristics, the uh, uh, facial hair on the, on the, on the face and, and um, hair at all the areas. And it's the difference between a five-year-old boy and a man. Okay, all the secondary characteristics. And then also... Um, in females, it releases that secondary oocyte in the graphene follicle, and that's also the develop, uh, because, and then creates the development of the corpus luteum. This corpus luteum is what causes the release of progesterone. Okay, and progesterone is what's going to keep that fertilized egg in the uterus and stop the uterus lining from tearing away. So that's quite important. But also the releasing of that secondary oocyte from the graphene follicle and then the development of the corpus luteum. So you must know this. Luteinizing hormone, we can abbreviate to, abbreviate to LH. And follicle stimulating hormone, so FSH, that's also it's easy to remember. Just write FSH, much easier. But spermatogenesis and then the releasing of the egg. Okay? Um, now, this is the third hormone. So, so far, the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland, so it's in here, is going to, these are the ones you need to know. Growth hormone, growth, repair, replacement. You've got your uh, um, luteinizing and follicle stimulating hormone so that we can reproduce. Okay, we've got thyroid stimulating hormone. Now, people, and I mean Thai, just look at the word. Thyroid stimulating hormone. What do you think this hormone does? Basically stimulates your need to... The thyroid. Yes, the thyroid, which is... That's it. Food, isn't that, it? That's it, yeah. That, that, that's it. Look. Paying attention. Uh, what does it do? Well, it's called, hello, thyroid stimulating hormone. It's like... Chopper. Mr. Chopper, what do you do? I chop wood. Huh? Okay, this is what it is. Thyroid stimulating hormone, what does it do? It stimulates the thyroid. Yay! Two marks. So, very, very easy. Stimulates the production of thyroxin by the thyroid. All right? Over secretion gives you a goiter, which is that swollen growth around the neck. Why? Because the thyroid cells say, sure, battling to make this thyroxin um, and I keep being stimulated. So you know what? Let me make, if I've got 10 cells, let me make 20 cells because maybe those 20 cells can make enough thyroxin for this person to cope. And then it isn't enough because you keep getting thyroid stimulating hormone going and saying, hey, hey, thyroid, thyroid, come on, come on, you must make more thyroxin. And the thyroid sits here like a bow tie. And it says, listen, well, 20 cells aren't working. Let me make 20, 30 cells. And that's what causes the goiter or the growth on the neck. So over secretion of this, of thyroid stimulating hormone, or TSH, which keeps stimulating the thyroid, causes the thyroid to grow. And that develops into what we call a goiter. Under secretion, well, guess what? You're going to produce less thyroxin because it's thyroid stimulating hormone. And, well, you just, your whole metabolism just slows down because you're not producing thyroxin, which increases or rather regulates the metabolism or the catabolic and anabolic processes in the body. Okay? Um, now, prolactin. Now, lactin, think of lactate, okay? And also lactate. Toes, because come on, guys, you've done organic, uh, organic compounds. 
lactate, lactose, lactin, uh, prolactin. What do you think it does? Huh? Stimulates the mammary glands to produce milk. And when do you produce milk? Only once the baby's born. So I'm certainly not going to produce any milk because, hello, I haven't, I'm not giving birth to a baby. All right, so it's only females that have had their gestation period, so they've been pregnant, they've given birth, and it's only once they've given birth that the prolactin starts. It counteracts the effects of dopamine, um, which is responsible for sexual arousal, and over-secretion can cause a loss of libido. Why? Because you are feeding baby, and that's your primary, your body. Remember, your body's a very primitive structure, okay? And it's saying, listen, got to feed this baby, got to make sure this baby's okay. Um, we got to get this little thing to grow because I've just produced it, for heaven's sake. All right, so it says, okay, Mammary glands, come on, make that milk. It counteracts the, dopin, uh, uh, the dopamine. So women generally, when they are breastfeeding, are not very... Um, uh, open to suggestion. Open to suggestion. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a thousand ways to say this and, and, and be like all cool. But yeah, it, to open to sexual activity, they sort of like tired, they're busy with baby, they're sorting babies out, they're feeding baby, they're doing this, and, and the last thing on their mind is to, to have intercourse of any sort. So it's because of the suppression of the lacto prolactin, and then also too much prolactin, well then there's a lot of suppression of the dopamine, and therefore there is no libido, there's absolutely no sex drive. So it actually works on the hypothalamus as well and, and, and suppresses because it's the hypothalamus that controls sex drive through this whole process here. Okay, and I think we're sort of heading towards a, a little breaky here, aren't we? Mm -hmm. Should we take a little minute. breaky before we start the posterior lobe? I think so. Cool. All right, so guys, make sure we're going to take a little bit of a break, but make sure. You go, you grab a little snack, grab whatever you need to so you don't have to keep getting up, going to the bathroom, none of that. You need to pay attention because this is a very important section. Easy marks, as Kathy said, so make sure, make sure you come back. We'll see you after this break. Welcome back, Mindsetters. I hope you had a nice little break. You took your time, and now you're back with us. You're ready. You're focused. We're about to get into this. Make sure, make sure, guys, keep posting on the page. I know a lot of you keep saying, Kathy is awesome, but besides saying Kathy is awesome, because we all know that, right, if you have any problems. But for now, Kathy, take it away. Oh, you're so sweet. Mwah. Thank all you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, people, now, that was the anterior lobe. We've done the anterior lobe. Now, the posterior lobe. And the posterior lobe's at the back. All right, so posterior. And here we have anti-diuretic hormone. You must know this. You have to, have to, have to know this. So listen, anti means against. Diuretic means to we. All right, diuretic, I'm going to write you to we. And I know this isn't like proper biological terms, but it, it'll help you to understand. So to we, and you are anti-weeing. Why would you be anti-weeing? Why would anything in your body be anti-weeing? Because you want to keep the water in your body. Why would you want to keep that water in your body? Because you want to use it for something else. In this case, to cool your body down. And are we going to do the hot, cold story? Hot day, cold day, how much ADH, less ADH, and I'll do that right now so we don't forget to do it. So, Antidiuretic hormone, what does it do? It's produced by the hypothalamus, this is very important, and it is secreted by the posterior lobe only because it's produced by the hypothalamus, all right? Um, it regulates now osmoregulation. You think, ah, long word, oh my gosh, what does this mean? Osmo means water. So you are regulating the water in the, bodies, in the body. What does the kidneys do? The kidneys uses water to get the rubbish out of our body. Because why? The kidneys are an excretory organ. So they use water to flush out the wastes that they've taken out of the blood. Take that, store it in the, in the, in the, um, the bladder, 
And when the bladder is nice and full, that little valve that we learned to control when we were about one and a half years old to two years old, boys two, us girls about a year and a half. Guys are always a bit slower. What can I say, ladies? Anyway, that valve, we open it up, and the water plus the wastes makes up urine, and that goes out of the body. It is excreted out of the body. All right? Um, over secretion, in other words, if we have too much anti weeing hormone, okay, we're going to retain water and we're going to swell. I mean, how difficult is this to remember? If we have an under secretion, so too little anti weeing hormone, we end up dehydrating because we're weeing all our water out. Now, just in case we don't have time, this, in my opinion, is a matric final exam question. I have nothing to do with the exam setting. I have nothing to do with examinations. I did for many years, and I spent a long time trying to figure out and spot questions. And I'm telling you now, people, this is in. Okay, it will be in in some form or manner. So watch. Okay, we have anti-diuretic hormone. Okay, it is an anti-weighing hormone. All right, so look at this. I'm going to do, let's go with yellow here. We have a hot day and we have a cold day. Okay, antidiuretic hormone secreted by the posterior lobe of the pituitary gland, but it is produced by the hypothalamus and stored in the in the posterior lobe of the pituitary gland, this hormone controls or regulates our water level. So that's why we say osmoregulation. Okay, so on a hot day, look at this. And I love this. It's, it's so simple if you just think. All right? On a hot I'm going to leave ADH there. On a hot day, we need more sweat. Do you all agree? Do you agree? Yeah, hot day, we must sweat, okay? We need more, but mind you, us girls, we don't sweat. We, we exude, we glow. Guys sweat, <laughs> we don't. Okay, so for males. <laughs> On a hot day, we need to make more sweat. Why? Because we need more cooling. Okay? Now, we need more cooling, but guess what? We need for, to make more cooling and more sweat, we therefore, meh, we therefore need more water. Do you, do you agree with me? Because remember, if you've got more water in the blood, the blood goes to the sweat glands. The sweat glands say, uh-huh, takes the water, takes a bit of waste, takes a bit of salts, and zhups out onto the skin. The, the sweat evaporates. We cool down. All right, so hot day, more sweat needs, is needed. We need more cooling, that's why. So therefore, we need more water in the blood. So how do we get more water in the blood? More water in the blood is a direct result of more antidiuretic hormone. So therefore, we need more ADH. Now, ADH works in the tubules of the kidneys, all right? So it goes into um, the, co the cortex part of the kidney, and in that cortex part of the kidney where we have our, uh, and, and our, uh, the distal convoluted tubule, and as it goes down into the collecting tubule, that's where it works. And what does it do? It makes those, those, the, the, the tubule more permeable to water, so the water just pulls out. Okay, if there's less ADH, less water gets pulled back into the tissue and more goes down into the bladder. So, more sweat, more cooling, that's why, more water in the blood, therefore we need more antidiuretic hormone, and what do we end up with? More concentrated urine. Okay, and that is when uh, you, we wee very little. Think of a hot day. Do you go to the toilet every five minutes? 
No. You're lucky if you go to the toilet four times. You should be going five, six times in a, in a day, all right, if, you're having the right, if you have the right amount of water. If you have too little, then you'll go less, all right. But that's it. So, more sweat, more, because we want to cool down more, we need more water in the blood, therefore more ADH, therefore we have more concentrated urine. I mean, how difficult it is. More, 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 more. Okay, where does ADH work? Where's its target organ? The tubules of the kidney. The distal convoluted tubules of the kidney and the collecting tubules. Now, on a cold day, exactly the opposite applies. We are going to have, we need less sweat. Guess what? It is cold. You don't need to sweat when it's cold. You need to stay warm for heaven's sake. So you don't want evaporation of your skin. So we have less sweat. We, have, we need less cooling. Therefore, we need less water in the blood. Blah, 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 blah. And less, less, less. And the last one, it's all less, less. And here, uh, okay, I'm going to write you less, ADH. Okay, and therefore, we are going to have less concentrated urine. Why? Because guess what, guys? We've got less water in the blood. We don't need the water in the blood. We want the water out. Otherwise, we are going to swell. We don't want to swell and walk around and look like... Big mama's house guy because an ankle sitting this size and if you touch your skin it sort of like wallows in. We don't want that. So less concentrated urine and another way to write less concentrated urine is say that it is diluted. And that is why in a cold day we wheeze so much. You sort of, uh, but also because we drink things to keep us warm. So you have a, a, a mug of coffee and go wee. Why? Coffee contains caffeine. And what does caffeine do? It inhibits antidiuretic hormones that makes you urinate. All right, alcohol. Um, come on, um, Ty will, you'll know. Uh, you're a student, I mean, like. I know friends who do. Uh, fr I of course, it's always friends. <laughs> My, it's I, friends. I have a friend, okay. <laughs> but when, um, you know, when, when especially guys, when mm. they go out and they drink, all right, and they, yeah, we're having a beer, and let's have another beer, and let's have another beer. Mm. And when they get to the second or third beer, one will go to the toilet, and then all of you will sort of, after that, have like team urination times, because... It's more like a relay. With girls, that's when they go in oh, groups. Okay, well, <laughs> relays, but as soon as, and they, uh, there's a term for that, you, you, you break the seal. Mm. It's because it's as that ADH starts to work. And ADH now says, I want to work, I want to work. And the alcohol says, I, and this is literally what the alcohol does, is it inhibits. It doesn't stop, it doesn't kill, it inhibits the ADH. So the ADH may be there, but it can't do its job. Mm -hmm. And if they're that case, if the ADH is inhibited, it's the same as having less ADH. And if you have less ADH, you're going to have more dilute urine. And that is why people will go to the toilet so often when they drink. The same when we drink coffee. We drink lots of coffee. Caffeine does the same. It inhibits ADH. Um, tannin in tea inhibits ADH. You know, so it, those are the kind of things that, that, that you need to understand and know. All right, so this here would be a negative feedback. system. And what does a negative feedback system do? It makes sure of homeostasis. And one of the things we need to control in homeostasis is our water balance in our bodies. All right, so how do we do that? with antidiuretic hormone, which is produced by the hypothalamus, stored by the pituitary gland, the posterior lobe of the pituitary gland, and secreted directly into the blood because endocrines are, endocrine glands are ductless, and it travels to a very specific target organ, which is the tubules 
the distal convoluted tubule in the nephron of the kidney. All right. Less antidiuretic hormone, dilute urine. More antidiuretic hormone, more concentrated urine. Right, the urine will be very yellow. It will be very pungent when you smell it. It's like that very first wee in the morning. Okay, everyone, when you have your first wee in the morning, it's darker. It has a, a, um, it has a slight smell to it. Not a disgusting smell. It's, it's, it's got a smell. Whereas the rest of the day, you probably don't even know that it's, it's anything other than water. All right, but it's just that first one. Why? Because you were sleeping, your body was breaking down, your body works harder, and that's when your, like your maintenance system kicks in to clean everything and rebuild cells. That's why it's important when people are sick, when they're recuperating, they need to sleep. All right? And that's why they sleep so much when people are sick, because you're giving your body a chance to fix and to get rid of all the rubbish. Same as the maintenance crews in big building office blocks. They don't work during the day. You imagine them vacuuming there while the CEO is busy talking on the phone or, or in a presentation. At night, the guys come in and they clean and they fix things and da-da-da-da. So the next morning, your blood is full of waste okay, or, or uh, your urine is full of wastes that have been taken out of your blood while your kidneys happily worked all night, except your kidneys work all day as well. Right, so... <clears throat> Um, and the last thing that's also secreted by the posterior lobe. So ADH, very important. Negative feedback system of ADH, very important. Secreted by the posterior lobe of the pituitary gland here. Hypothalamus. Um, also, the posterior lobe of the pituitary gland. It's not that. It's just the posterior lobe of the pituitary gland. We're looking at oxytocin. So we had prolactin in the anterior lobe, which helps with, with the uh, production of milk. Here we are going to have oxytocin. Uh, also females only, sorry guys, and the oxytocin literally stimulates the contraction of the uterus. So if you had a uterus, you could have some, but you don't, so you don't need it. Uh, the girls do though. So the oxytocin's main function is that it causes the uterus to contract, okay? And as the uterus contract, guess what? It pushes that baby out. So oxytocin is only really ever released when we have to give birth. And you guys are lucky you don't need to do that. Okay, so that's the pituitary done. Now the thyroid. This is the se we're going to do our second type of negative feedback system with the thyroid gland. Now remember the thyroid gland sits here. So we've got the pituitary. We've got the thyroid sits here like a bow tie. Okay, so if tie, gorgeous boy that he is, if he was wearing a dinner suit and he had a little bow tie on, that is exactly where your thyroid sits. All right, now, here's a picture of a person. Let me just outline this a little darker. You've got that. And there's your thyroid. So it's like a little bow tie there. All right, now, thyroid gland, and everyone's happy where it is. Okay, if we look at the thyroid, the main thing we want to look at is thyroxin. And we say, okay, Thyroxin is the hormone. And that is what the thyroid releases. Okay? The thyroid only works because of thyroid stimulating hormone, which is released by the anterior lobe of the pituitary. So more thyroid stimulating hormone will tell the thyroid to release, to release more thyroxin. Less thyroid stimulating hormone, the thyroid will release less thyroxin. So let's see what it does. It regulates the basal metabolic rate. Now you look at that and think, ah, again, basal means the basic, all right? Metabolic rate, our metabolism, the rate at which we build things up and break things down, all right? So that is regulated by this hormone called thyroxine. It affects growth. It affects the functioning of the heart and the nervous system. How? Because remember, Thyroxin regulates your metabolism. If things are working properly, and they, or they are working fast, or they are working slow, because this hormone gets things to do what they need to do. All right? So faster, slower, faster, slower. Work, don't work. Work, chill. And that's literally what thyroxin does. 
So it functions, it affects the heart. It will affect your nervous system and the way your nervous system works. It works in conjunction with, for example, adrenaline. Um, so it, it has the same things. It speeds up the metabolism. If we want our metabolism, um, if we want more energy, what do we need? We need our cells to work at a higher rate. And we need our metabolism to increase. So people that are very athletic and do a lot of exercise. And um, I've got a friend who's a, a springbok cyclist, for example. I've got another friend who is a, a, um, a springbok tri spring triathlon person, lady. Triathlete. Yeah, but athlete is more male than athletes, uh, whatever. Okay. <laughs> I, 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 I'm being facetious, but okay, <laughs> she's, she is a, a, a triathlon athlete. Um, if you look at them, they are gorgeous. Their bodies are beautiful. They are um, slim and trim. Um, they take uh, supplements and extra vitamins and extra mineral salts and protein shakes and carb shakes and blah, blah, blah. Why? Because they're making sure their body works at an absolute optimum rate. So their metabolism will be work at a much higher rate than yours or mine would. Um, or somebody who, who never lifts their buns off a couch, uh, their metabolism is going to be much, much slower. It's the rate at which the body functions. It's the rate at which we build things and break things down in our body. That is because of thyroxin. It stimulates the growth of different tissue. It also affects the fetus and children especially. Because remember, that's also a process. It's the building process. It's the growing process. It regulates body temperature. Now think about this, people. If you are cold, what do you do? You get used bumps. Okay, so all those little, those little um, uh, er erector, the erector muscles on the hair follicles have to pull up straight. And as they pull up straight, they pinch the skin and we get a goose bump. What comes next? You start to shiver. Now look at this. If you shiver, can you control it? Okay? Can you control your shivering? Nope. Not in a million years. You can't control it. Your body's just going blah, 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 and your lips are purple and they're moving up and down. What's that? It's your body's way of making your muscles work. Your metabolism is increased. Why? So that you're making energy, you're making heat, because nobody on this planet can do exercise and not get hot. Because when you exercise, you increase your metabolism, which means part of that energy that's being released is released in the form of heat. And that heat of the vibrating muscles is what warms you up. So just a simple thing like that. So we regulate body temperature. We also stimulate the hypothalamus. All right, so to, to, to for ADH and all the other things that, that, that it's going to release, okay? Um, also, your body temperature, if you're re it's a really hot day. Ty, what do you want to do when it's really a really, really hot day? Um, get into a cold pool. Okay, now you can't get into a cold pool. There okay. is no pool. So then I don't want to be moving home, anywhere. <laughs> what do you do? You just go lie yeah. on a couch, don't you? Mm, sit where there's no sunlight. Where there's no sunlight, where it's cool, and the last thing you feel like is, like is playing volleyball or um, tennis, or you just want to go and pfft. Why? Less thyroxin, so you have your metabolism is lowered, so you're not burning energy and you're not releasing extra heat. So that's how it does the temperature regulation. Over secretion, you end up with a goiter. I explained that to you. Those cells just keep growing, and you end up with this growth around the neck. Under secretion, cretinism and myodema. Okay. If cretinism, the child becomes mentally um, dull, is probably the best way to describe it. And it's like we feel on, how you would feel on a really hot day when you actually don't feel like doing anything. You just feel like, Phew. all right, same thing here. So cretinism, go and look it up, but it's an, it, it, an, it just, the body doesn't work properly. And myodema, same thing. They, they, the people become aggressive and they become um, sensitive to everything and, and they just like fidgety and all the rest of it. So go and have a look at all of this, okay? Make sure that you've gone through that. I just want to check here. I think we need to go for a little bit of a break. And once we've done our break, we can move on to the negative feedback system between the thyroid and thyroid-stimulating hormone. All right. So, guys, 
Make sure, make sure, make sure you stay tuned and make sure that you guys are making notes. You have your pens and pads out and again and again. If you guys are lost anywhere, make sure you post on the page so we can help you guys out. But for now, guys, we'll see you after this break. Welcome back, Mindsetters. I hope you had a nice little break. You got your little snacks. You don't have to get up anywhere. You've answered your phone calls. You put your Blackberry away. Okay, not Blackberry because that's what you're using for the Facebook. But anyway, guys, make sure, make sure, make sure you guys keep posting on the page. But actually, before we start, I have a question here for Mackie. And I know you're giving me that face because I said something wrong, didn't I? And no, Belinda's no. probably in the studio no, going, oh, Blackberry, yeah. I But mean, anyway. <laughs> Why does Can I give <laughs> iPhone a plant as well, please? <laughs> Anyway, why does a person's skin become pale during emergency situations and immediately after an emergency situation, they experience a cold sweat? Mm. Hmm. Okay. What causes and that? And by the way, having mentioned Blackberry now and iPhone, which is my phone, uh, we have to also mention Samsung, Nokia. Yeah. Who else? Um, Ericsson. Ericsson. Uh, um. And... and Anyway, that all goes, we got 15 minutes, here we go. Okay, the skin going pale, remember that the blood vessels, it's because of adrenaline. Adrenaline is released by the medulla of the adrenal gland. Now, adrenal is the gland that sits on top of the kidney. Because remember, everything to do with the kidney is renal. So it's adrenal gland. Okay, the medulla is the inside, cortex is the outside. The medulla releases adrenaline. One of the functions, or, or adrenaline, one of the things adrenaline causes, because remember it works on your, your, your sympathetic and your, para, your autonomic nervous system, sympathetic and parasympathetic, is that it causes the blood vessels to the skin to constrict. As it constricts, it's to now channel that blood from the skin to the muscles where we need the oxygen and the glucose to make energy so you can run like anything. Okay, because remember adrenaline is your fight and flight hormone. So the blood, so the skin becomes pale. And the skin becoming pale now redirects that blood and increases the pressure to the muscles. So that's that. And that cold sweat that you feel, that is as the blood vessels constrict and pull away from the surface of the skin, those capillaries, shups, that constriction also causes the, the sweat glands to, be con to contract. And when the little sweat gland contracts, what's inside it? Sweat. So the sweat comes out. And that's when you have the pale skin and the cold sweat. Because the sweat is not to cool you down. The sweat is as a res response to the contracting of the blood vessels and the, and the sweat glands. Okay, so we end up with a cold sweat. Right, but what it actually does do, it has a function, is it's you, you're getting prepared to run. And everything is preparing you to run. Your heart's beating faster, your breathing rate has increased, your pupils have dilated. It's to run. So you're actually preparing yourself to cool your body down in preparation for the amount of energy that's going to be exerted once you start running. Your fight and flight hormone. Next question. And another question was that, Kamhelo wanted to find out what causes hypothermia. Okay. Um, while we here, because I'm sure I won't get through it. Hi. My, what am I doing here? Hang on. Hi. Po and high per. Okay, high po versus high per. How do you remember the difference? Thermia to do with body temperature. High po has an O in it, and that O means it is O so cold. And that's how you remember it. So hypothermia is to do with being absolutely cold. So you've gone from goosebumps to shivering to absolute, your body shutting down. Because first your, your, your uh, um, thyroid will work into overdrive. 
okay, the th thyroid will be incredibly stimulated. Why? Because it wants to keep the body warm. So increase muscle activity, increase the heart rate, increase, be increase everything so that you are making energy. And then the body decides to hold on, this, this is not working. What do we need to keep alive? We need to keep the brain alive. What do we need to keep that brain alive? We need warm blood. And we need blood that, and we need oxygen, and we need uh, uh, nutrients. So what do we do? We pull from everywhere in the body, and we make sure that this, this torso and the head are okay. So what happens? The blood starts to pull away from the appendages, the arms and the legs. And it will then take the blood th away from there to keep it here. And that's when you start going into hypothermia. All right. And all you want to do is sleep. Why? Because if you're sleeping, you're using less energy for everything else. And that's when people end up with frostbite because all the blood pulls away and those parts then freeze. The cells die. So that's how your body copes. So hypothermia, it is cold. Oh, so chilly. All right. Hyperthermia. Oh my gosh, it is hot, 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 hot. I want to get, I want water around me. I want to cool down. Hypothermia. So if you just remember hypo is cold, hyper is the opposite, which means you are too hot. Cooling down is easy. It's warming up that's the problem. So we don't want the body to get too cold. This is always a problem. Okay. Hypothermia, your biggest issue there is dehydrating. Right, so, Happy, next question. I think that was about it for now. There is one more uh, where Vuyello actually wanted to find out where is the pituitary gland found? Is it inside the brain or outside? Okay, it's within the cranium, all right, and it's physically attached to the hypothalamus, which is part of the brain. So it sits, if we go back to our... Slides. Uh, yeah, we've got our little chap here. You see? That's where it sits. It's, this is the whole brain. It, uh, it sits here. So it's, it's attached. It's in the brain, and it's attached to the hypothalamus. And as I said to you, if I take a knitting needle and I stick it to the tips of your ears, okay, so it goes, if you take the, the, the sort of the apex of your ear and you shove it through there, and you take another knitting needle and you shove it through the center of your cranium at the top, where the two meet, that's where your pituitary sits. All right, so it's part of your brain. It's there. And that's why it's also, remember, your master gland. Okay, so let's just go back to where we were. Um... Okay, um, I'm going to do this next. I just want to show you what a goiter looks like here quickly. Um, here's your goiter. This is a picture which I took from Wikipedia. That woman there is what a goiter is. And we, we, we sometimes see this in people in rural, very rural areas, uh, especially where um, clinics are not all over the show and where people are possibly not as educated as they should be. Um, so it, it's, but generally, this is picked up at clinics when it's just even just the thickness of the neck. It never is allowed. This is an old picture. This is the old times. Okay, but that's what a goiter looks like. Okay, now, you have to know this. People, please, I've got how much time? Tie, 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 how much time? I think time? we've got about five oh minutes. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so here we go. Okay, this is the pituitary. And that's which part of the pituitary? Because remember, it's the thyroid stimulating hormone is released by the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland, which is the master gland. On this side, in fact, let's move our little circle closer. We have our thyroid. Okay, so what happens is this. The pituitary gland releases thyroid stimulating hormone. Okay. The thyroid stimulating hormone stimulates the thyroid. Okay, so 
thyroid. So thyroid is stimulated to release thyroxin. And thyroxin is the hormone that causes or controls your metabolism, okay, or the catabolic and anabolic functions of the body. So, the thyroid will now release thyroxin. So, thyroid is stimulated to release thyroxin, and it's going to release more thyroxin, okay? Having more thyroxin in the blood, okay, immediately causes or let me put it this way, inhibits the pituitary gland, okay? So here it inhibits the pituitary gland, and when it inhibits the pituitary gland, the pituitary gland is now going to release less thyroid-stimulating hormone. Okay, I didn't want to put the more in there before I'd finished, okay? So, the pituitary gland releases more thyroid-stimulating hormone. That stimulates the thyroid to produce more thyroxin. More thyroxin inhibits the pituitary gland, so it releases immediately here less thyroid-stimulating hormone. So, the thyroid is now less stimulated... which means that we now are going to have less thyroxin. Less thyroxin, therefore, we have a, um, a slower, slower metabolism. All right? So slower metabolism, and we are now going to have less thyroxin in the blood, and what is that going to do? It is going to stimulate the pituitary, all right? And the pituitary will now be stimulated and stimulated to do what? To release more thyroid-stimulating hormone. So now we have more thyroid-stimulating hormone. The thyroid releases more thyroxin. More thyroxin inhibits the pituitary, so the pituitary now releases less thyroxin. So you've literally got a figure eight, and that's your negative feedback system. So more thyroxin, okay, faster metabolism, but it inhibits thyroid-stimulating hormone. So less thyroid-stimulating hormone, less thyroxin, slower metabolism. It says, oh, no, 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 no. So immediately stimulates the pituitary to release more thyroid-stimulating hormone, and the thyroid produces more thyroxin. Less thyroid-stimulating hormone, less thyroxin. And so it has normal, up, corrective mechanism, goes to normal and down. And then it goes corrective mechanism and up. And so we have homeostasis to control the metabolism. It's between the thyroid stimulating hormone, the target organ is the thyroid, and it causes the thyroid to release more thyroxin. If there's more thyroxin in the blood, that inhibits the, the pituitary gland from producing thyroid-stimulating hormone, so it will produce less thyroid-stimulating hormone, which means the thyroid is less stimulated, so it releases less thyroxin. And that is the negative feedback. And you are going to get one of three, if not all three. Go. Okay. I'll put it on Facebook. All right. Awesome. So guys, I know it is super intense and there's a lot that is happening, but guys, make sure, make sure you keep posting on the page. But from I'm us, <laughs> we're going to say goodbye and see you next time. Study hard.